Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan, Chapter 4, Continued, Horrors of the Valley of Death. Beyond this valley was a deeper valley, the valley of the shadow of death, where Christians suffered more than in the valley of humility. In my dream, I saw him come to the edge of this deep valley where he met two men, self-love and critic, coming back in a hurry. They were descendants of the spies who brought back an evil report of the good land of Canaan. Where are you going? asked Christian. They shouted, back, back, we're going back, and you'd better do the same if you love your life. Christian asked, why, what is your trouble? Trouble? We were going down this same road you were traveling, and we went as far as we dared. In fact, we were almost past coming back, for had we gone but a little farther, we would not be here to tell the story and warn you. But what have you seen? Why, we were almost in the valley of the shadow of death when, as luck would have it, we saw the danger before we came to it. But what did you see, Christian asked? What did we see? Why, the valley itself, it was as dark as pitch. We saw the hobgoblins, satyrs, and dragons of the pit. We also heard the hideous sounds, continual howling and screamings, sounding like a great many miserable souls in iron chains of affliction. And over the valley hung a dark cloud of confusion, and the angel of death hovered over it all. That valley is exceedingly dreadful and utterly without order. Christian said, I fail to be convinced by what you say that this is not my way to the desired haven. You may have it your way, they said, but as for us, we want none of it. We're going back. So they went back and Christian went on his way with his sword drawn, ready for an attack. Now he saw on one side of the road a very deep ditch where the blind for centuries have led the blind from which none have emerged. And on the other was a filthy quagmire where the lustful of all ages have fallen and have found no bottom for their feet. King David once fell in here and would have drowned had not the merciful Lord of all lifted him out. The path between the ditch and the quagmire was exceedingly narrow and Christian had to be extremely cautious to stay on it. It was almost like walking a tightrope over the bottomless pit in the dark. To go on was very dangerous, but it was just as hazardous to attempt to turn and go back. He crept along, feeling his way, not knowing what minute he might come to the end of the path and plunge downward into death. In the middle of the valley close by the path was the mouth of hell from which came flames and smoke rolling out toward the path. And there were hideous noises and doleful voices against which Christian's sword was ineffective. Yet he had another weapon that was always effective, effectual fervent prayer. So he cried, O oh Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Then he had a little more faith. He went on quite a distance while flames occasionally leaped out toward him and he continued to hear those dreadful noises. He heard sounds as of something rushing to and fro in front of him, making him feel as if he might be torn to pieces or crushed like a clod in the street. This continued to harass him for miles. Then he thought he heard a mob of fiends coming toward him. He stopped to decide what to do. He had half a notion to go back, yet he reasoned he might be halfway across the valley. Realizing that he had already passed many dangers and thinking that the risks might behind might be greater than those before him, he resolved to go on. Still the fiends seemed to come nearer and nearer, but when they came almost to him, he cried with a loud voice, I will walk in the strength of the Lord God. Hearing those words, they drew back and came no farther. I must not forget to record one thing. When Christian came near to the burning pit, he became so confused that he did not know his own voice. 
Just as he was passing by the pit, a demon stole up behind him and whispered insulting blasphemies against God in his ears, which blasphemies Christian thought had proceeded from his own mind. This troubled him very much, more than any wrong he had done thus far on the journey, because the wicked thoughts and words were so bitter and so utterly unjust against the one he loved the most, the one who had done the most for him. Yet it seemed that he could not help thinking these words and whispering them to himself, but he did not know where the evil words came from nor how to stop his ears from hearing them. After he had traveled in this disconsolate state for some time, he thought he heard a voice up ahead of him saying, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Now he was glad, because first he believed that someone who feared God was in this dismal valley as well as himself. Second, he believed God was with that person, whoever he was, or he could never have spoken such words. And he said, if God is with them, then he is also with me, or I never would have heard these good words in such a place, though here I did not realize it. Third, he was glad because he believed he could overtake this person and have good company the rest of the way. So he hurried on as fast as he could going as fast as he could go, calling to the one before, but there was no reply. Whoever was in the path ahead of him must not have known the meaning of what he heard or its source, thinking that he himself was alone on the road, and so he did not answer. Emerges from the darkness of valley, but now the day was dawning. Viewing the eastern hills, Christian said to himself, he has turned the shadows of death into the morning. Looking back over the way he had come, he wondered how the Lord had gotten him through. He remembered the verse. He discovereth deep things out of darkness and bringeth out light to the shadow of death. He was deeply moved when he saw all the dangers from which he had been delivered. Now the sun was shining and this was indeed a great blessing because the worst part of the road was still ahead. Before him to the end of the valley were snares, traps, pitfalls, slippery places, large gaping holes and deep pits. No one could have ever avoided them all in the dark and not to avoid them would have meant certain death. But now he could see his way and he went on past them all saying, his candle shineth on my head, and by his light I go through darkness. In this light from above, he came to the end of the valley. Now in my dream, I saw these at the end of the valley, blood, ashes, bones, and thousands of mangled bodies of faithful pilgrims who had caused this wholesale murdering, I'm sorry, faithful pilgrims who had gone this way. While I was wondering what had caused this wholesale murdering of human beings, I saw a little before me a cave where two giants, Pope and Pagan, dwelt in old times. By their power and tyranny, the men and women whose bones and ashes lay before me were cruelly put to death. When Christian went by this place without danger, I wondered why he was not molested. Then I learned that Pagan had been dead many a day and that Pope was very old. I also learned that because of Pope's many brushes with the government in his younger days, he had grown so crazy and stiff in his joints that about all he could do now was sit in the mouth of his cave, grinning at pilgrims as they went by and biting his nails because he could not now get at them. At the sight of the old giant, Christian didn't know what to think until the giant said, you will never mend your ways until more of you are burned. But Christian held his peace with an unperturbed face and went by the Pope's slaughter ground unhurt. Conclusion of chapter four. <laughs>